another uh, adventure Greetings and salutations, fellow pilots. This is Akira Shin. I don't know if you have or not. Hopefully you have. But I got an email from World of Warplanes that offers uh, three particular aircraft. The Pegasus, which is this uh, Russian aircraft here. The ME-210, a German heavy fighter. And most important for this video, the XP-77 high-speed American fighter. One of the few fighters that has a cannon on it. And uh, so I have acquired these aircraft and I will be featuring in this video the XP-77 for you. So here we are in game and the XP-77 Bell Tier 5 American premium fighter and I am just so very excited to bring this to you I have really wanted this aircraft for a long time and uh, I'm, I'm very thankful that uh, Wargaming uh, gave us the opportunity to get it even the butterflies like it but anyway it is a fighter so uh, it has uh, machine guns but of course as I mentioned it's got that 20 millimeter cannon, which is just really nice. It does 80 damage per second, 420 rounds per minute, and an effective firing range of 660 meters. That's pretty good at uh, tier five. Uh, of course, it has the standard American machine guns, two 12.7 millimeter machine guns that do 38 damage per second with a rate of fire of 700 rounds per minute. So that's, that's great. That rate for starting fires. Good combination to have such a high rate of fire with the machine guns and then the power of the cannon together. Effective firing range on those is 500 meters. As a fighter it does have low survivability. It's said to have a good airspeed and boost. Now yes the airspeed is good. I agree with that. The boost of course is only six seconds so that's you know Japanese level abysmal boost duration so you know nothing to be happy about there but hey it is what it is right a good maneuverability in horizontal turns with all of the equipment that we'll be going over later in our build and our pilot skills I've been able to get this aircraft down to nine seconds on the 360 degree turn so that's pretty good for an American fighter uh, it's said to be effective in mid-altitude maneuvering combat, so its service ceiling is 1,200 meters. So I would say it's kind of a low mid-altitude fighter, and, and it tends to stall quite a bit on the climb, so um, could, could do a little bit better in climbing. Take a look at the stats here. As I said, 1,200 uh, maximum optimal altitude, 3,200 meter service ceiling. The rate of climb is 105 meters per second. So, yeah, that's not spectacular by any means. And as the stall speed is 130 kilometers per hour, it's not horrible, but uh, if it just in combat, it just feels like it stalls a lot. It kind of is an issue that I experienced quite a bit flying this aircraft. Good on the roll, 165 degrees per second. Maximum optimal speed is 432 kilometers per hour. And again, there's that nine second 360 degree turn. Boost speed is up to 520 kilometers per hour. Cruising speed, 356 kilometers per hour. Maximum dive speed, 630 kilometers per hour. 
does feel like a fast aircraft. I know when I'm trying to get from one sector to another in some planes, it seems like it takes forever, but um, the XP-77 seems to go pretty, pretty fast. Cumulative damage for all the forward firing armaments is 156 damage per second. And the optimal distance listed is that for the auto cannon. As you know, I like to feature these aircraft at specialist level so you can see all of their equipment. And I do have this aircraft at specialist. For the cockpit, I've equipped advanced culinator sight, which has plus 11 accuracy of forward firing offensive armament. So that's really nice to have. Bonus characteristics, a plus 10% chance of causing a fire. So that even makes that 700 round per minute on the uh, machine guns even better at starting fires. So good synergy there with our equipment and our armaments. Plus 5% accuracy when firing at moving targets. Always a positive. Your other option was the cockpit armor, but in order to equip that, while it would decrease our pilot's chance of being injured, we'd lose maneuverability, and that's that's not that great. So, if I didn't mention it before, our negative with the sight is minus 7% pilot's resistance to injuries. Now, I do try to ameliorate that negative by equipping emergency medical kit as a consumable and that of course if our pilot gets injured that gets our pilot back up to health. For the airframe I've equipped advanced lightweight wing frame which increases roll maneuverability by 8.5 percent, maneuverability in turns by 2.4 percent, bonus of plus 3 percent wings resistance to critical damage plus 3 percent roll maneuverability. The negatives are minus 3.8 percent in aircraft hit points minus 6.5 percent wings resistance to critical damage uh, which we later offset with some other equipment specifically the advanced reinforced skin which increases tails resistance to critical damage by 17 percent and plus 17 percent wings resistance to critical damage so that more than offsets uh, the issue with the lightweight wing frame a bonus of plus five percent tolerance to damage from AA guns, which is always useful, plus 5% aircraft hit points. The negative is our minus 1.8 cruise speed and minus 1.8 maximum speed with boost activated. But we do equip uh, for the engine advanced lightweight power unit, which increases by 1% acceleration with boost activated and plus 0.5% cruise speed as bonus characteristics. So that kind of offsets uh, those issues there with the advanced reinforced skin. Our other option for the wing frame would have been polished skin or reinforced airframe, but both of those would have decreased our maneuverability, and I don't want to do anything with this fighter that's going to decrease its maneuverability. As I mentioned for the engine, we have advanced lightweight power unit, which increases uh, maneuverability in turns by 2.4 percent. You know the yaw maneuverability increase is kind of irrelevant. Don't really do any yawing so that's not very helpful. Uh, so you know whatever. A bonus characteristic of plus 1 percent acceleration when boost activated plus 0.5 percent cruise speed as I mentioned. The negative is minus 10 percent engine resistance to critical damage but I try to offset that by equipping as a consumable emergency engine restart system so if our engine does get damage we can restore it back to operational efficiency. Your other options would have been engine armor protection uh, which would have increased the engine's resistance to damage but at the cost of aircraft speed. Don't want to make this aircraft slower. Uh, combined injection boost system which would have increased boost efficiency but our boost would be less available. Didn't want to do that. We need that boost as available as possible. It's only six seconds. And finally, uprated engine, which would have increased our engine thrust, but we would have had an increase in fire. That's a very viable option if you wanted to go with that. Um, but uh, I really wanted the increase maneuverability, so that's why I went with lightweight power unit. Consumables we haven't discussed. A secondary control system, which restores controllability of wings and tail if they get uh, damaged there. That's I think with any fighter that that's a must because your your uh, tail 
and your wings do get damaged uh, when you're in a fighter. This is going to happen. Also, CO2 inerting system, so that reduces the chance of fire by 30%, and that's effective for the entire battle. You don't have to activate that, it's just always there. For ammunition, I went with fragmentation ammunition, which is said to be best for auto cannons. Now, you know, I have those in the depot, and I went with that because I wanted to accentuate the cannon. I mean, hey, we've got an American fighter with a cannon on it. So I really wanted that to, to be at its best. Um, but you would be maybe even, I think there's an argument to be made that you might even be better with universal ammunition because it, it does, it both increases the chance of inflicting critical damage, but it also increases the chance of causing fire. So it, it's helping both of our forward firing armaments versus just mainly the cannon as is the case with the fragmentation ammunition. But like I said, I wanted to really you know, accentuate that cannon since we just don't have other American fighters with cannons on them. In terms of pilot skills, to further augment our cannon, I went with Marksman 1 and Marksman 2. Marksman 1 and Marksman 2 Reduce dispersion of forward firing weapons by 10%, cumulatively, the two of them. Uh, and then, of course, Marksman 2 also increases accuracy of forward firing armaments at actively maneuvering targets by 10%, which is excellent. To augment our equipment choices in terms of maneuverability, I went with Aerodynamics Expert, which increases the positive effect of the mounted equipment on aircraft maneuverability and speed by 40%. And finally, aerobatics expert, which increases maneuverability in all axes by 2%. So uh, that whole combination of equipment, enhancing maneuverability, and coupled with our pilot skills gets us to that nine second, uh, 360 degree turn. So unusual for American fighters, we have this awesome paint scheme here. Love this camo. Uh, many of the, one of my complaints about many of the American fighters is that their paint schemes are not just, they're just not that great. But I love this paint scheme here. Uh, this is summer you're looking at. Uh, here's winter, which is, you know, it's okay. Uh, desert, not too bad. Kind of like desert and marine and see this is your typical kind of boring american um, paint scheme but we'll go back to summer because really enjoy that all right so that's my build for the xp 77 let's see how it actually performs in battle So our battle in the XP-77 will be over the Scorching Sands Edge of the World Theater of Operation. Pilots, get ready for action. Let's go. We'll head here first to the military base and then probably on to the garrison at center map. Well, I say we'll head to the military base, but we are moving and we have not logged in yet, so... We get into the game you soon here. The area of Be ready. I guess we'll just head straight to the garrison there because that's kind of where we are. Packs a pretty good punch there. up here. Pretty good range. Just using short little bursts here. And we're awfully high and we've kind of stalled out here. We're here our way over our 
area where we should be. Let's see if we can finish off this heavy fighter. A rocket has reached the target. Enemy object damaged. There we go. And I think we'll climb back down to where we're supposed to be. Give me some speed here. A bomber up there, but a little high for our tastes. Got a P-43 down here. Multi-roll, so let's deal with that. Fighter here. Just using short bursts so these cannons don't overheat. Yeah, we got a yak up here. Kill us. Our tail here. A yak again. There we go. Got him with the fire. Yeah, that's the benefit of those machine guns starting those fires. That helps a lot. That bow fighter over here again. It's our boost. It's a pretty fast fighter, I gotta say. It gets places quickly, which is nice. Specialist P40 over here. Which I'm pretty sure we should be more maneuverable then. Maybe faster than us though. He's not going to get to find out. What do we have here? Heavy fighter. Out of the way for it. We have complete control of the skies. Way to go. Put our pilot back up to health there. Ah. Keep it up. All right. So we've got some action over here at our airfield. So we'll head in there and uh, defend it. Nine o'clock, let us back in. Be advised, a line of thunderstorms is approaching. I have got to say that I am really enjoying this aircraft so far. I'm proud of you, pilot. Head back home. 
Okay, so number one spot on the team, two chevrons on the grade rank. Flames in the sky for starting our little fires. Hat trick and flying start. Head back to the hangar and take a look at the after action report. So, 115,644 in currency, 6,156 in experience points, 307 in free experience points. 11 kills, 2 assists, destroyed only once, captured 2 sectors, and we did all that in 6 minutes and 20 seconds of battle duration. 10,800 in personal points. So yeah, folks, that was a lot of fun. I have to say I really enjoy flying this aircraft. I've been looking forward to it so much, and it has not disappointed. Well, let's head into another battle. Alright, this time we'll be over the Peripheral Mission Perimeter Theater of Operation. We'll head first to the military base, hopefully get that secured. And then, I don't know, maybe go on to the garrison. Let's see what we got here. The heavy fighter coming at us, so we're going to go ahead and start maneuvering out of the way. And just a little short burst so we don't get that those cannons overheated there. Heavy fighter coming in here. Alright. So we've got the military base. And it looks like they're about to get. Yeah. They did get the garrison. They've got an A6M1. More maneuverable than we are, so we definitely want to take it out quickly. And then we've got an American multi roll, which we are certainly more maneuverable than. That should be an easy kill. have some air defense aircraft to shoot at. We should be able to take this sector pretty quickly. Yeah, we got something on our tail there that caused damage to our wings, but we got it restored. Controllability that is. Switch targets here to this heavy fighter. All right, there we go. Got that garrison secured. Got that A6M back here, but he's shown us his tail. Not a good idea. Got an FW190A1 up here. He's kind of high for our tastes. Our good news is we are more maneuverable than it is, for sure. Has good roll maneuverability, those uh, German multi fighters, though. Multi roll fighters. Alright, let's see here. 
Ooh. Do not want to go head to head with that. Not head on anyway. Come on. There we go. Whew. Get our wings. Controllability restored there. Doing a good job starting fires. I don't know that we have the health to take this thing on. If that rear gun starts chewing on us. American multi roll. Oh no, German multi roll. Should be easy picking, so. Not gonna outmaneuver us for sure. First, tighten our turn. There we go. <laughs> we are just barely hanging on, folks. Yeah, we've got a fighter coming in on us here. even. Uh, let's see if we can head over to the military base and uh, stop them from taking it. Oh, we've got that A6 M3 there. Oh boy. to low health though. All we need to do is take it out and we'll save the... There we go. Ah! Fire, huh? I was hoping we'd get a fire on that. There we go. Alright, this thing stalls pretty easily. What is on our tail there? Oh, FW 190. Alright, we'll get down here and get that taken out. As he doesn't swing around too soon on us. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Heavy fighter over here. Fighter up here. Yeah. Ah, oh, well, def 
feet is what it is, right? But uh, number one spot there on the team. Two chevrons in the grade rank. Subjugator. Effective fire. And flying start. Take a look at the after action report. Okay, 99,961 in currency. 1,000. 927 in experience points, 96 in free experience points. 13 kills, 4 assists, we were destroyed only once. And 2 sectors captured. Did that in 8 minutes and 40 seconds of battle duration. 11,340 in personal points, which was more personal points than the number one player on the winning team. So I certainly think we did everything we could there. And uh, the XP-77, again, I think really performed well. I mean, we were on death's door there for most of that combat. Um, and yet we were still, you know, making a difference, making an impact on the battle. So our last battle in the XP-77 will be over the peripheral mission Silence of Ice Theater of Operation. And we will head first to the garrison. Actually, you know what? Let's make that the forward airstrip. Head there and hopefully get that secure. And then maybe we'll go over to the garrison or maybe meet up with the enemy right in this area Let's see how it goes all right should be starting to get some anti-aircraft here shortly and we'll run some light fighters here Short bursts are best. See if I can get a scope here. Yeah, it's just too far away. And that's wow. Reds are really hitting this pretty hard. Let's work on the fighters here first. <laughs> well, I know we were getting chewed on, but I really wanted to take that Spitfire out because you just don't want a Spitfire maneuvering around in your area there. That can be deadly. And they got the airfield. Let's see if we can get in there and take it back. Let's see, what do we have here? P-43. F4F. Alright, so we will focus our attention here on the enemy aircraft first. And we are certainly more maneuverable than this multi roll. In fact, I think that's the aircraft that shot us down in the first place. Ah, come on. I'm bound and determined to get this fellow. There we go, we got our Avenger accolade there. Wow, look at all that red. We we're just freaking surrounded. And we've taken back the airfield here. 
steal this P-43 now. Goodbye. The hurricane up here. That's another aircraft you don't want uh, freely maneuvering around in your sector. Hurricanes are great aircraft. Zoom in here a little bit. He's kind of on the edge of our range. And do a little rolling here. This aircraft is pretty good at rolling, so use that as our strength here. Alright. What do we have up here? Bomber. Alright. Let's head over to this. Oh, wait a minute. What do we have here? F4F coming in. Deal with that, and then we'll head over to their garrison. that you have 109 e ah see see what I mean about the hurricane yeah it didn't take much for him to take us out there with those cannons very effective We have a lot of aircraft over here working on the plant. So let's see if we can get over here and stop them. This is where it'd be nice if we had a longer boost, right? This JU-87G is almost dead. It's a little bit of cannon fire from us ought to take it out. Whew. I was lucky there, honestly. Because could have easily been taken out there by a bomb, so I kind of took my chances. All right, so off we go to their garrison. We need to make some inroads into their assets. Receiving reports about rapidly deteriorating weather conditions. What is that? Will be unable to reach you. Do you read me? Air defense aircraft. We'll focus on these lower level light aircraft. Those will be the quickest to take out. Ah, lost my mouse control there for a second. There we go. Let's see if we can take out this light fighter over here. Saw him sneaking up on us in the mini-map there. F4F there. It's maneuvering pretty well. I need to take him out quickly because there are some other reds in this area. All right. There we go. Nice. All right. Maybe turning this thing around. I got the plant, it looks like. Got a specialist aircraft over there. Head over there and see if I can take it out. It looks like it's kind of low in health. So it shouldn't take much to get it. 
Oh, okay, they got it. Excellent. Alright, we've got a ground attack aircraft over here. It's kind of sitting up there like a sitting duck. Hurricane, probably the one that uh, shot me down earlier. Let's see if we can repay the favor, huh? Get another uh, Avenger accolade. Yeah, we were losing there, but I think we turned that around. Head back home. All right, awesome. Got the win. Okay, so Guardian, Conquer, number one spot on the team, four Chevrons on the grade rank, Subjugator, Hunt for Falcon, and Effective Fire. So yeah, that was really nice that we were able to pull that out. Oh, 121,537 in currency, 2,914 in experience points, 145 in free experience points. 13 kills, two sectors captured, two Avenger accolades. We were shot down twice, uh, but got revenge on both of those. That was all done in 8 minutes, 59 seconds of battle duration. 11,540 in personal points. Get this back to our... Summer paint scheme there. All right, folks, so that is the XP-77, Tier 5 American Fighter. Love it. Really have enjoyed flying this aircraft tremendously. So glad I got it. And if you get the opportunity to get the XP-77 and get it to specialist level even... I hope you have great success in it and as much fun as I have.